Hey guys, Dean Mike here. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays with some Mega Man X2. Last time we defeated the Booble Crab in the Deep Sea Base. And today we're going to be doing something a little special. We're going to be fighting two bosses. One special boss and today's adversary, the Flame Stag. I don't know if this is what the Flame Stag is supposed to look like. I recall it having red flames coming out of its head, but who knows? I could be wrong. But this stage is a little tricky, the volcanic zone. The way that I'm going to go about doing this is pretty cumbersome, but the way that I have planted down in my head seems to work out. So we have this kind of rhino beetle here, robot, that is following us up this mountain. The main use of this beetle is supposed to be so that way you can destroy these walls. But if you do this little hip hop, hip hop anonymous, all the way up, you have to keep jumping literally the moment that you touch the platform on its head. You can get as high as you can. This is the easiest way to do it. And then just do a, a dash jump over there. Get yourself a life. Get a life. You'll want that. And then just reset. It'll respawn at the bottom. And then you're just going to do the same thing again. But instead of worrying about going to the right this time. And taking damage, of course. We're going to go to the left. So on the left, you will see that we can get our first special item. This is a sub tank. I mean, we have technically gotten a heart tank already, but I don't count that. All right, so now I'm actually going to show you what you're supposed to be doing, the intended use of the beetle. Blow up the wall here and then gather some items, some health. I'm going to take a little bit of time here now that I have that sub tank and actually fill this sub tank up. And you're going to be thinking to yourself, why would you do that? Play the way that the game gives you. And I get it. However, this stage is a bit of a butt. Not the stage itself, but the fact that I have to fight two bosses in one. It's a little tricky. And the special boss itself... There is no real weakness for it. So grabbing extra lives, getting a full sub tank if you can. It's not always necessarily guaranteed that these enemies will spit anything out, which is annoying. But this is just the approach that I thought would make sense for it. I'm not great at this game, and so having something to kind of back me up would be good. So that feels like enough. I don't think I need to try to scrounge anymore for that one. But there are two here with a third below it. Sometimes these guys will give you drops. Sometimes they won't. I don't know what the rate is that any of this happens. It is pretty inconsistent. But I'm just kind of looking for those big drops. If you can find it, there's one that I'm going to ignore. I'm not ready to jump down there yet. Jumping down this part of the cave will trigger the next set piece of this level which is a bit frustrating but filling up that sub tank is pretty darn useful i would say give yourself a chance to take damage of course which invalidates that i'm just gonna go for it so switch to your spin wheel here there's a life right there if you want to foolishly try to go for that there's no real way to do that so we're going to be fighting against the clock here. There is a raging volcano underneath us. And there's a heart piece, heart container, whatever you want to call it. I also goofed that just now. Obviously, because I died. But the way that actually works best, the spin wheel is probably the best item that you have that will take out that gate in one shot. But you need to get closer to it. Shoot it right up against it, and then it'll knock it down. That's probably the best way to do it. But now we're going to use the Rhino Beetle again. And now we can actually take advantage of the health stockpile here in the inside. Around the inside. And we're just going to keep going. Might as well just try to gather a little bit more health while I can. While avoiding taking the damage that invalidates the whole process. Yeah, this level is pretty precarious. Every two Mavericks that you fight 
the uh, that's kind of the intended way I think of fighting a special boss so you do two mavericks special boss two mavericks special boss etc that seems to be a pretty good flow of oh boy pretty good flow of oh did I completely ignore that hell too oh I did that's dumb but that's basically how you do it because there's eight total so that does that does track because you do the first two before they appear so they appear I think you can do them as soon as you want to maybe but anyway, this is a bit of a tricky situation that's kind of annoying is we need that beetle again. Because that little wall right there is actually the entrance to the special boss room. I think the bosses do... Oh boy, we just ruined it. I don't know if it's going to respawn or not. But every stage I think has a special place where you can... Oh, never mind, he's back. But taking damage, that was dumb. Every stage has a spot where you can fight the three special bosses in order to 100% the game. Oh my gosh. Yeah, taking damage is cool. Let's just do a reset. There we go. Okay. That should be good. You gotta get the three bosses along with the eight Mavericks to one hundo the game. Not that I care or anything, but... I'm gonna try for you guys, viewers. I'm trying for you, okay? I'm giving you the best. But there you go. Full heal, full sub tank. Let's do it. I'm feeling pretty good. What do you think, viewers? You f do you believe in me? Yeah, fighting two bosses per stage is not the easiest thing to do. This is actually the, the most difficult of the three from what I've read. Sir Sergis, Sir Sergis, Circus. We're going to the circus. Unification for the good of all. Yeah, I don't like that kind of talk. That's like World War II talk. Get out of here with that nonsense. With your fascisms. But he does this weird gymnastics twirl, shooting these little bubbles out of his head. There's no real weakness. At least not that I have yet. So he'll be firing these mines. He has this dumb little force field that he'll pop up from time to time. I think if you stay low, brum, 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 and then you shoot him, that's usually a pretty good way. And you can clear out the mines with a charge shot. So try to do that. It's very goofy looking. Kind of reminds me of like Dr. Jero from Dragon Ball Z. But from what I've done in the past, I've noticed that like just the normal max charge shot X Buster. Seems to do the most damage to him. And the main recipe for success is just to kind of jump over his platform and kind of stay lower on the stage. He does dish out a ton of damage though, so you gotta be careful with that. Another alternative that you can do, I didn't do it in, in I'm not doing it here, but in previous attempts, I tried to get fancy and use the spin wheel, which you can do. The spin wheel will temporarily disable his little shield but you know that's not too bad and then he just kind of jumps on his platform and stabs us in the face we have merely delayed comma the inevitable nice translation error there i'm sure but our reward for our hard work against circus is zero part number one we did it so after mega man x1 if you remember Zero sacrifices himself to defeat Vile and then dies. So this is our way, I think, of trying to bring him back or something? I don't know. So it would be nice to be able to refill my heart tank, sub tank. Unfortunately, I, uh, I grabbed that already, so no dice. That's a bummer. This part's annoying. So you have to make one more ascent, not timed or anything like that, but there's these little gas pipes just absolutely like, just spewing toots, like left and right. Me after a good block of cheese with these weird flying squirrels. I actually really like the animation of them and the idea of that, that there's these flaming flying squirrels that are just hanging around trying to get stuff cooking. 
And I don't know if they give any sort of drops. I would have to think that they probably do, but from my experiences, they're not great and consistent, so I wouldn't rely on that if you're trying to farm life or something like that. But anytime that they shoot their little fireballs out and they touch the gas pipe, it'll set it on fire and hurt you, so watch out for that. Just try to avoid them if you can, which I clearly have not been doing well, or jumping up walls well. Classic. We're doing great here. We're doing great. Let's get the heck out of here. Okay, great. You know, I, I need all the health I can get. Why not? Just take a little bit of damage on the way out. And of course, there's no more there's no more health drop. So you're going right into the flame stag, whether you like it or not. Okay, let's do it. See if we can get this all done in one. You have to do it in one continue, basically. So the two lives you start with. And if you grab that third one, which I did, but I obviously sacrificed myself once. So we got two more shots. Get your bubble splash, whatever this is called. That's his weakness, obviously. Water typically is to fire enemies. He's a little grumpy boy. So his main form of attack is he throws two fireballs, one low, one high. Which, obviously, if you stay far enough away from him, he won't be able to hit you. But interestingly, he doesn't really have iframes. You know, you can you can shoot him and it'll temporarily stun, but it's not really long enough to me to really consider it to be a full stun. And this is very close. And then he gets real fired up here. As he's firing the second shot, just make sure you move away. I almost died right there. That was close. Yeah, you have to basically do this in one shot because if you don't, Sergus, Sergis, Circus, the Circus will not be in town. It'll move. And then I think you'll run out of time. I think you have to do it every two Mavericks. So there you go. Successfully beat Sergus and the Flame Stack all in one. Our reward is the Speed Burner. I don't know much about this item, but I know that it becomes pretty practical once you get the X-Buster upgrade. Turns into a pretty sweet mobility tool. All right, so that's all the time we have for today, everybody. Thanks for watching. I've been D-Mike. This has been Mega Man X2, and next time we're going to be taking on more Mavericks and having a good time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.